All right. So nice to see everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and start class by having a seat on something to elevate your hips. Chair, pillow, blanket, bolsters, blocks, something just to get your hips up off the floor an inch, inch or more. Cross your shins, one in front of the other, with your foot underneath the knee, so your feet aren't pulled back to your hips. They're pulled forward, making it more of a flat, straight block with your shin bone. Press your hands into your thighs as you flex the feet, so you feel the thighs lift slightly as you push your hands down into them, lift your spine tall. Keep your thighs flexed, drop your shoulders as you exhale. Take another deep breath, press your hands down. Get that lift, find some new place to move it that it didn't move on the first one. As you exhale, draw your back ribs in, side ribs forward, front ribs up. Try to keep those three spaces moving, active and lifted. And chin lifted slightly and the eyes closed. The next few moments. I, uh, in, in all the years I've been practicing yoga, one thing has still been true is that there is sometimes when I close my eyes and I start to do yoga poses or things like that, the, the words I hear describe the poses are those of the teachers that came before me, taught me how to move this or that. I can still hear their voices pretty clearly in my head. But over the years, my own practice has taken on my own very unique voice. And that's come through and taught some of you. When you go through your practice today, today, think about how you would describe your practice to somebody else. Maybe not each pose, maybe not, you know, each feeling you got to, what when you would think about how you would describe your yoga to somebody, what would it be? Because this practice is your practice, not the practice of the teacher who's coming up with things. Or any that came before him or her, this is yours. You are the current. You are the end goal of teachers. To have you here, to share something with you that might change or help your life, or be something that you can't even imagine. And so make it yours, my friends. Make today a, a day of your yoga practice being sorely yours. You have your own language for it, your own way you talk about it. And you may not know what other people are going to remember or always hear in their heads when they hear you talk about it. But make sure it's your words, not just your teachers. Because that person asked you what it was. They want to hear your wisdom, they want to hear your story. And that's how the tradition keeps going. That's how all this keeps moving forward. So make it your practice today, my friends. Have that level of connection and relationship to it that you have the language to begin to describe it, to talk about it. Because it took me a while to learn, but as I did, I learned to have talk about my practice in yoga, not as a right or wrong, what the teacher taught me, but here's what I'm going through. And I wanted to talk to my teacher about it and it changed how I got to learn things. Put it in a place of being not about right or wrong, but about what it is to me and ultimately how it's shaping my life.
Bring the palms together to chest. I'm touching the sternum. Alone shortly three times and begin. Breath in. Oh. 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 Very head. Keep the essence of yoga inside yourself. Bring your hands in the lap. Let your head rise and your eyes open. All right, cool. So nice to see everybody. Some more people snuck in. Hi, Shuba. Nice to see you, dear Margaret. Hope everyone's good. Ah, that is a lot of glare. <laughs> yeah, would you shut that window? Or... No, it's not that. Ah, there we go. Get rid of that. Halo? It's not a halo. We're not doing that. <laughs> So nice to see everybody. Um, let's come on to a standing position. We'll do a couple standing poses, get the body warmed up. Uh, we'll continue working on uh, some stuff. So we're going to work. Uh, the thing we're starting in October. We're still going to use some of the seated poses we worked on, but we're going to we're going to start working a lot on poses that deal with the structural. Uh, posture of the upper back. Uh, it's a very similar series. What if you look in the old light on yoga, like I think the second edition of it, Mr. Angar had a series about hunchback. We have a better term for it these days, but we're going we're gonna to start kind of exploring what that is, how to change that posture, open our back muscles up. So starting to dasana, thighs together, feet together. Take your right foot, pick it up in front of you, and then place your right foot to your upper inner left thigh. Use a chair, use a wall you need, whatever you need for your balance so you don't fall off to the side here. But as you work into Vrakasana or tree pose, notice the first place you put your foot is usually about mid thigh or closer to the knee. Even if you have to reach down and get it, pull that heel up closer to the groin because this is going to make you actually easier to stand up taller the higher it is to the groin. I think, what, what? Just as we've been kind of working out the last few months and working in through different poses, seeing how it's different when we engage the legs from seated posture to engage the lift of the spine, the same is true in our standing poses. But to tie it up a little bit, your right foot is up on your inner left thigh here in Vrakasana or tree pose. So as you push that heel into the thigh and push your thigh into your heel, so right foot to left thigh, left thigh pushes into right foot. Drag the flesh of your left thigh down towards the knee a little bit with the right heel, like hook that heel into your muscle skin flesh and drag down a little bit. And you notice you probably lift your chest up a little bit. When you do that, that causes the piriformis muscles and the psoas, or the psoas, not the piriformis, the psoas to flex. So your spine stands up a little taller. This is an excellent pose to start really changing hip, back, groin stuff. Especially if you've had a groin injury, this one is really good to start getting that lift and lifting inside of it. Tree pose is pretty pretty phenomenal and one of those poses I think deserves a lot a lot more work and tech out done to. Stretch both arms up if you can, complete the balancing aspect of the pose. Challenge yourself to not just lift with your arms, but push your heel into your thigh, drag the heel down a little bit, and lift from the core body helping lift the arms up. And if you fall, you fall, you know. Not like you're being videotaped, she is, not you. <laughs> she will fall. All right, bring your arms down, switch your legs up. Take your left foot up and put your left foot up on your inner right thigh under its own power first. Just kind of see where that range is and where it stops for you. And then once you get it up there, kind of notice how that affects your posture. Can you stand up tall? Can you lift? Can you move? Is your balance really bad? 
But then after you've checked that for just a brief moment, pull that left heel higher up into the groin, really up there. So you get the full flex of it. You can really get to those inner thigh muscles. The higher it goes up to the groin, the more it actually gets closer to the psoas muscle where the psoas ends at the inner thigh, or at least where it connects to some other thing. Maybe not ends. Push the heel into the thigh, push the thigh into the heel. So the two are fighting each other, so your pelvis has nowhere to go but up. Drag that inner heel, hook it into the flesh, and drag it down slightly like you're trying to peel the skin or the flesh of the leg downward. And then check in, like, you know, here's the first pose of the class, second really, uh, Tadasana's first, where you're in, in your pose, working your body. What's the, what's, you know, how do you describe your practice now? Not about being critical, but be descriptive. We could all say, my practice sucks, my balance is awful, my teacher is fine. I'm here for the dog that looks cute once in a while. But when you're in the pose, what is the thing, what is the language that gets developed, that gets developed about your yoga practice? And trust me, there's language there. Sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive. Just make it the language you want. This is your yoga story. Take both arms up, finish the pose for a moment. Push the heel into the thigh. Keep the legs active so that when you lift the arms up, even one arm, you're lifting up from the legs, working so hard, pushing through the floor, pushing into each other, dragging that heel down that inner right thigh a little bit. You have to ascend the upper body. All right, go ahead, bring the arms down, step down. Stand nice and wide on your yoga mat, three and a half to four feet. Have a block or chair nearby if you use a block or chair for any of the standing poses like warrior three or a half moon or triangle. You know the you know the hard one. So standing nice and wide, turn your right toes out. Stretch your arms out nice and wide. Stretch your upper body out over the right thigh, shifting your right hip towards your left hip first. Set your pelvis up because the way your pelvis moves, the way your spine is gonna go. So if, you're, if your pelvis bowl tilts to the right, your spine will stretch to the right. Reach out over the right leg, take your right hand to the floor, take your left hand up. Great. And then similar idea from the last pose. How do we engage the legs so we can lift it and keep the back muscle active without over torquing the neck or the shoulder. So my challenge is while you're in this pose, don't lean back as hard for a moment. Take some of the for the backward lean out of it because a lot of us have been taught and I've taught to push the chest back, open up the chest, lean your chest forward a little bit like you're gonna slouch slightly and then work your legs a little differently. Remember in tree pose, you had to flex that bent knee or flex the thigh of the bent knee by dragging the heel down the flesh of the thigh. Hook your right heel and right big toe joint into the earth and drag the foot away from you. Do the same on the left. So now once your legs are active in the pull, like you're gonna tear the yoga mat apart, then lift your chest up and back from the pelvis moving. So you get a better ascension of the upper torso because the legs are in this very deep engaged action of pushing through the earth in some form. And then you got to experiment with it. So you, you get out of the over push, you come down a little, you work the legs, you relift, feel a little different. No? Bring the body up, switch sides. Feel any different? Turn the left toes out, turn the right toes in. 
Shift your pelvis first, stretch your arms out wide. Shift your hips to the right, so the pelvic bowl points over to the left or tilts towards the left. Stretch the spine out over. Take the left hand down, right arm up. Just before you overly engage your legs, push your chest back, see where the work is. Happens a lot in your shoulders. There's very lift from the chest, the front of the chest and the abdominus region. I mean, your abdominus region is there, it's just not flat. A lot of it's in your right shoulder and in your neck. So lean your chest forward a little. Hook your left heel into the ground, push it through the ground more, big toe into the ground and stretch the leg away from you. Like drag that yoga mat away. And then do the same on the back leg. And then keep both those legs in that drag, then lift your chest up and back by from the pelvis lifting it up and back. Yeah. Tristan says it's easier to feel the difference on this side for her. So cool. Now, this isn't just about your legs being strong. That's an oversimplification. This is about your legs being active and encouraging the movement of the other part of the body. Remember, every yoga pose is a whole body pose. Triangle pose is really good for your psoas. It's also good for your upper back. It's good for many different parts. But it's being aware of how the engagement of the body into that action frees that area to move is part of what I think is a level of mastery in yoga. Not that you can't do it just not every split second, but you're aware of how to do it. You can create those effects through what, through a pose that you might be doing for 15 different things. Bring the body up. Ultimately though, really what makes you mastery of it is you just do the pose. Turn the right toes out, turn the left toes in. Hands on your hips for a moment. Turn your upper body to face out over your right thigh. Roll the left hip forward as best you can. Your pelvis is now, the pelvic bowl is tilting forward. So your, your chest has to lift up. Stretch your left arm out away from, uh, over your left leg, as, or right leg as far as you can reach, I'm sorry. So your arms in front of you. Stretch your upper body over the right thigh. Take your left hand down to the block. Take your right arm straight up into a revolved triangle. You may not twist very far. This is like pose four or three, you may not go very far in it right out the gate. It's okay. Very nice, Shuba, good twist. Now, here's what I would like you to do. Glenda, switch hands. Left hand down, right arm up here. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> you got it. Very nice. All right. While here in Revolve, take the right hand down, place it on your hip, and recreate the same similar action in the legs. Hook through the heels, start with your front leg, hook through that heel, hook that big toe, and drag the yoga mat forward, and then do the same on the back leg. So you feel your legs have engaged in a motion that shifts your pelvis slightly, and then when you stretch your right arm up, Stretch from the pelvis, lifting the chest up slightly so your front chest muscles can rise up towards the hand and your left back muscles can go down towards the left hand. There we go. Feels different, doesn't it? So now with that stable leg, you might get some different level of rotation to your spine. This is how Mr. Angar like, really started working on people with back issues, had them do tons of standing poses that made their legs fire so then they started to create supp uh, supple movement of the spine. All spinal changes happen through standing poses. So there'd be an active warming of that muscle instead of just overdoing on the tighter stuff. Take the right hand down, bring your body up, turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. And so we're gonna work through, I think the original series was something like 65 to 80 poses. We're gonna work through and kind of explore it. I think this is a fun series of stuff to do. Turn your left toes out, turn your right toes in. Yeah. Very intense in your traps means you're doing it right. I'm happy for you. Turn your left toes out, turn your upper body to face out over the left leg with your hands on your hips. 
and then stretch your right arm out. Lean your upper body out. Stretch your right arm long. So you're pulling that right side over that left thigh. Take your right hand down. Take your left arm up. See how it feels on this side before you like really get your legs back into it. Good. Revolved poses can be very powerful uh, uh, poses in the sense of they can really move our spines a lot and give us a lot of freedom of movement in them. It's not just about our hips. I think a lot of our standing poses end up in our hips because we sit on them a lot and they are tight and or atrophied, but our spine then has to make up the difference, mostly our lower back. All right, so you've had a second to feel it. Bring your left hand to your hip so you lose some of the twist. Stay in the pose. Hook through the heels, push down through the heels and drag that left foot forward on that yoga mat so you feel that, hand, that left hamstring engage and that femur bone set into the hip socket and do the same on the back leg. Get really each leg heel and the big toe joint hooked and dragging on those yoga mats and then twist again, working through the legs so the pelvis muscles help lift the chest and spine so your left, uh, uh, left arm goes up, your chest bone lifts towards the left hand, your back muscles near your shoulder blades stretch to your right hand. That's where the twist is. That's where the hunchback would be, as Mr. Engar would say. This is the part you, that you don't want. <laughs> Take a few breaths into it. All right, bring your left hand down, bring your body up. Turn your left toes in, turn your right toes out. Now, bend the right knee so the right knee moves above the heel to a modified warrior one. Get your correct distance with your legs. Stretch your right arm out. Reach out over the right leg with the right side of the body. Take your right hand onto the block or to the floor on the outside of your foot. So side angle for a moment. This pose is really interesting because I think here's, here's a moment where we can make it all about our back or we can make it all about our hips. Before you do anything else, I want you to lean your chest forward more towards the inside of your right leg instead of over your right thigh or backwards. Kind of slouch for a moment. Take your back out of the pose. Then, okay, work your right heel and your right big toe joint down and drag the yoga mat away from you, but the knee goes with it. And then your left leg has to do the same. Hook through the heel, hook through the big toe, Drag the yoga mat away from it. So you might feel like your hips come down more, but you have to work harder. That means your back is released. So just to, so if you don't know, stop working your legs like that. Keep your knee bent, but just stop the work. Now push your spine back, lean your chest back, stretch your left arm overhead. So this is without the legs. Get your full, full feel of the pose. Take a couple breaths. What's, what, what side of your shoulder or your ribs or your hip joints working harder, okay? Take your left hand back to your left hip, lean your chest forward slightly, get out of the overflexed back, push through the heel, push through the big toe joint, drag the heel forward, drag the right knee with it, push through the left heel, hook that heel into the ground, like dig it in the dirt, in the big toe joint, and drag the yoga mat away from the right. The two parts are splitting away from each other. Then, when you lift your chest up and back, lift from the pelvic bowl up, from the very base groin muscle up and back, and then swing your left arm over. Feel the difference? What's the difference for you? Yeah, Tristan says her hips are screaming. But for some of you, what I see is I see the upper body gets to lean back a little easier without it being your shoulders gripping to hold you up. When you lift up out of the pelvic bowl because the leg muscles are flexed wide like that, just as I taught in class Tuesday, that opening of the inner thigh out allows the spine to release and lift. Your hips have to work harder in this pose because it's a bent knee hold. Bring your body up, turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out. Good. 
Stand a little wider, Shuba. <laughs> you can wear the long pants and hide. I can still tell how far apart your feet are. Bend the left knee. Stretch your left arm out. Reach your body out over the left leg. Get that extension. Take your hand to the block. Right hand on your hip. We won't do the before picture because, you know, we already know one side's harder than the other. We already know where we're starting to hang out. We're starting to form that. Now, now that we have this kind of technique to focus on, we can see where it's, we've not done it in the past. We can get uh, wacky. Push down through the left heel, hook the heel deep into the dirt. Big toe joint presses down, bend the left knee, pull that, push out against that yoga mat and let the left knee bend with it. So that left hip joint sits down into the pose against the hip muscle. Same for the right leg, hook the heel into the dirt, push it away. And then lift from the groin front pelvis up and back. That's excellent. Swing the right arm overhead, not straight up. Swing from the arm going in front of you and then over and go for that full extension. The reason this pose is in the sequence for hunchback, I think, is because when you stretch the arm overhead like this, there's a drag of the lateral muscle, it's called your latissimus dorsi, that goes from your spine up to your arm. And when you pull that, you're pulling a large section of your back. So if you're pulling a large section of your back from a very lifted and extended spine, you're gonna find a new, uh, greater height against gravity that the muscle cannot normally do if you're slouched and you pick your arm up. If you're ascended and you pick your arm up, you get much more movement. Bring the arm down, bring the body up. Good job. Yeah. There you go. Turn your left toes in, turn your right toes out. Bend your right knee. Turn your upper body to face out over the right thigh. Stretch your left arm out in front of you. Reach with your left arm over your whole right leg as far as you can. Stretch your chest out over it. And then take your left hand down to the block, which can be on the inside, or if you're a little more advanced, it can go on the outside of your foot. But the block gets to go on the outside of your foot if your arm goes over your knee. So you can't just like, I mean, the whole form has to go across the inside on the outside of the knee. That'll be for later. You'll probably keep it on your inside of your foot. So we're not even gonna do a before or after shot. We already know what's going on here. Hook the heels into the ground, hook the big toes, joints, and drag that right foot forward so you feel that hip flex, that thigh fired. Let the knee drag with the foot. Do the same on your left heel, especially. Now take your right hand on your right knee and push the knee into the hand and twist, lifting to the right, lifting from the groin up through the length of the spine and then stretch your back muscles down towards the left hand. And then when you're ready, stretch your right arm straight up and then stretch it over the head like side angle. So your arm uh, bicep is next to your ear and you're stretching from your left heel up through the right arm. But drag those heels Drag the feet, because even though this is a twist, you're still pulling the groin pelvis wide, so the back must move. Rotate the right ribs up, don't lose the twist. A twist from the navel and the front body pulling up to the ceiling as your back muscles pull down towards the left hand. And you may not twist very far, don't worry about twisting far. Feel the twist get into the back muscle even if it doesn't move a lot, you're still asking this pose to now be about from a open pelvis, can I start to move my spine? Up you come. Switch legs. Right toes in, left toes out. Bend the knee. Oh, there's Chaya. I thought, we, I thought she ran off. Stretch the right arm out over the left leg, stretch forward, turn the upper body towards it, lengthen out over. Then when you've gone as far as you can, take your right hand to the floor, take your left hand on the left knee. You got it, Glenda. 
You got it, Shuba. You got it. Now push your heels into the floor. Really hook those heels and drag the yoga mat. The left foot drags the yoga mat forward. And you got to learn to bend the knee. This is how you learn to have a soft knee and strong muscles. You try to drag your yoga mat with, uh, with bent joint. Same on your back foot. Dig that heel in, hook that heel in, and then drag the yoga mat away from you. So both legs are real, really into this splaying, pulling wide action from the yoga mat. The yoga mats are there to be sticky to keep you from sliding while you do this. Push your left hand into the knee, twist. See what help you can get. Feel the back muscle start to do it. Twist from your navel also. Pull your core muscle, your abdominals up towards your left side. Pull your back muscles down towards the right hand and then stretch your left arm up and overhead, trying to keep the twist. You may not go far, but you're going. Don't not take the hand up. Always take that chance to get that hand in the air and extend it. You want to get rid of upper back posture, you got to make that arm do some movement. Rebecca, work through your back heel more so that right hip lifts. Yeah, keep going. More on that, Rebecca. Don't let that back right hip drop down so far. You're twisting mostly in your left hip, very little in your upper back. Take a few breaths. Rotate any degree more from the chest bone turning. All right, bring the hand down. Bring the body up. Yeah, all right. All right, turn your right toes out, turn your left toes in. Turn your left toes in deeper than normal. Turn your upper body to face the right thigh. So there's 80 some poses in this and we're not even gonna stay, go from one to two to three to four. We're gonna skip parts because we wanna explore whole sections of this. So with your upper body turning out over the right thigh, Take both hands behind you and take your right hand and grab your left forearm near the wrist and then climb your hand up higher near the elbow. So already with your hands like this, with your right hand behind you, grabbing the left elbow, you're starting to set your upper torso. Your shoulders are pulled back, your chest is lifted. So you can't immediately drop your head down without feeling some resistance. Push down through each heel. Drag the right foot forward, put a hole in the yoga mat. Same on the left heel, drag the left heel back, roll the left hip forward more, and now stretch your chest out and down towards the right thigh as low as you can go. Pull with your right hand like you're trying to pull the left arm away from the shoulder joint. You may not go down far and your left elbow can bend, don't think it has to be perfectly rigid straight. No one said that. But you're pulling on it away from that shoulder. So as you go down, the chest muscles have to open and you're holding the pose differently because now as each leg drags the yoga mat apart, the lower spine has to learn to extend and it can't just all be in your shoulder, neck and upper back. This is a very good variation of this to learn so you don't just get into a slouch, but you really learn how to hinge the hip. So Shuba, let your left elbow bend, dear, and only grab the forearm. Don't grab your bicep. That's very good mobility to go that eye. Yeah, now grab and pull. There you go. Let your upper body roll down a little bit. That's okay. Let your nose come down even. That's all right. Very good. Exhale, bring your bodies up. Switch sides. How did that feel? Left toes out, right toes turned in. Take your hands behind you. Should be your right hand grabbing your left. No, left hand grabbing right. My bad. She woke me up from a nap before this class started, so no telling what all you're going to get. Both legs nice and long. Hook through the heels, big toe joints. Connect those two down. Drag the yoga mat forward. Push through the right heel. Drag the yoga mat back. Rotate the hip into it. Use your left hand to pull on the right forearm, pulling it away from the shoulder and then start to fold forward. But you use the legs to pull the yoga mat apart the whole time. Those legs are gonna keep you stable. This is another way for those of us that are worried about our balance as we progress in age, 
start teaching our balance to be something much different is to teach it to be engaged and to start flexing and extending the spine, especially to affect the upper back. I think most of the time we're gonna lose our, most our balance when our upper backs are totally shot because it throws our weight equilibrium off. There's less flexion on the high point. As you let your upper body go down, and that's good, let your upper, you can let your abdomen fold towards the thigh, your chest even starts to come down towards the, the knee, but your arm, your uh, left hand pulls against that right arm, so you're not doing it from shrugging your shoulders into your neck. So any amount of down you get out of this pose is going to be purely from the fact of the stability of your legs and the extension of your spine and not the, you know, compression or hunching of the upper back. And it's not about being perfectly straight. There is a rounding to this, especially in the mid. But this is just making it so you can't, I don't know. I don't want to say cheat it, but cheat it. All right. That's good. Bring your body up. Turn your toes forward. Fold forward, take both hands onto the floor in front of you, standing straddle stretch, beside a Padapanasana. Turn your toes in slightly. Keep your arms straight, keep your hands under your shoulders. I have a couple specific instructions on this to kind of keep in the, the teaching piece we're doing. Work your legs first, get your thighs engaged, push your thighs and hips back. Get your spine nice and what you think is extended. Everyone micro bend your knees, so you have to soften a little bit. Push down through the heel, push down through the big toe joint and tear the mat apart. Then let the legs completely stretch to the knee long. Now take a belly breath and pull your abdomen to your lower back. Be very aware that you do not hunch your upper back when you do this. When I say I want you to round your lower back, it literally means pull your navel towards your spine so you feel like you have to almost tuck your buttock a little bit. If that would be correct. This is going to sound counterintuitive, but just listen. Pull the navel towards the spine so you're rounding your lower back and you get a slight tuck of the hip. And then unhunch your shoulders. Walk your hands a little wider than your shoulders. Push your thumb joint near the palm into the ground and drag the yoga mat apart, and then bend your elbows wide to start to lower down into the pose. Shoulders come away from ears, but let your arms lower you down as you still pull your navel up towards your spine. Woo! Look at those long spines in class. How's that feel? Yeah, it's weird. It's weird, isn't it? What, what this is doing is the, the you kind of tricked your lower back into totally letting go. So everything's being held on your core and on the lateral muscles of the body. And if you let your head hang, just let your head drop and think about your spine like the center of a slide, right? If you put anything down a slide, it slides down it. That's your spine. Let your spine weight hang down all that muscle and bend your elbows more, letting your chest come down even deeper. This will correct. Flexion of the upper back, overly flexing the upper back. Because now you have a natural curve of your spine. Curving is, I think Mr. Angar was quite insightful, and you may have hit on it without even realizing that you cannot correct miscurvature by just forcing it to the opposite. We have to be an active balance of both. So now you're actually rounding, but you're getting a lot of relief and extension because your back is wide, your spine is long. Bring your body up. Mm. Oh, good, huh? Now, <laughs> hmm. Have a seat on the floor, stretch both legs straight in front of you, and then Dotson, please. Here. 
So with both legs straightened and dasana. You're going to take your palms onto the floor next to your hips and then slightly back behind them. Just a couple inches. Palms will be flat. So we've all worked some level of this reverse plank action. But we want to work it in the same form we have with all of our other standing poses. So standing straddle stretch, I had you push your thumb joints in the floor and pull the yoga mat apart. It's going to be the same here because the heel of the hand is kind of like the heel of the foot and the thumb is effectively the big toe. So you want to push the heel of the hand up through that big joint into the floor. And if you can get the index finger joint too, it would be good. And pull, push these, these three spots down into the mat and then pull the yoga mat apart. Like you're trying to pull it away from your hip. So already your chest flexes, bend your knees, plant both feet flat to the floor. Take your feet about hip width apart just to make the first four or five easy because we're gonna do a bunch. Push down through your big toe, push down through your heel. Now, here's the fun part. Your hands pull away from each other to the outside of your mat. Your feet pull forward. So push down through your heels, hook your heel into the ground, drag the yoga mat away from your hands, lift your hips up into the air as high as you can. Nice trick, good job. Don't worry, we're gonna do lots of those in the world. We're gonna do this for days. Pull your hands apart. Drag that yoga mat. Your biceps have to move. Push, hook down through the heels and drag the yoga mat forward so your hamstrings are quiet. Take a couple deep breaths. Let your head hang back. Quickly, your head can hang back in this if your hip isn't working your legs and your arms. I promise. It's scary. All right, come down. Not too bad. Everyone was up. Good. We're going to do it again. So again, rework the index, the thumb joint closest to the palm, the palm of the hand down into the ground, pull the mat apart, hook your heels, lift your hips up, put, drag the mat away from you as you lift. Now, while you're up here, hold and listen. Can you move your chest bone, not up, but towards your chin and move your back muscles towards your glute? So you're stretching your, the upper back muscles towards the buttocks so your head can hang back further, like your shoulder muscles are pulling under you more. You need to agree. Come on down. Very exhausting. Tristan says she's just wiped out. We're going to go again. Here we go. Now we're going to add a straight leg to it. Assume the position, palms flat. I don't know why there was a pause there, like I was expecting ooze, ahs, or terrible gas. So I'm just too used to teaching public classes, but we got to keep practice for when we all get back together. Push down through the palms, pull the yoga mat apart, hook the heels into the floor, hips up. You all right, Katie? Ask your question. They can wait. When I get pain in the outside, like I have pain in the shoulder when I'm up, I suppose. Take, take your hands wider. Wider? Yeah, wider. Now, keep your right heel hooked, stretch your chest bone towards your chin, back muscles towards your butt, stretch your right leg straight with your heel touching the floor. Hook your heel on the floor and drag the heel away from you. Woo, switch legs. Heel on the floor, Shuba, heels on the floor. This is a cabaret. <laughs> Bend your right knee and switch your legs. The left leg is straight doing it. Left leg is straight. Come on down. Watch Tristan for a moment. <laughs> she did not make a good sound when I said that. <laughs> she, you all need a rest and she is the sacrifice for your work. Watch Tristan for a moment. So she's gonna do the pose again and I'm, I'm gonna try and get through this quickly before she gets so tired she decides to kill me in my sleep. Uh, when you go up to stage one, stage one is just getting your hips up into the air. Great. When I say stretch your chest bone to your chin, what? It's easy for our chest to collapse, but go from your bottom ribs, push, hook your heels away from you and pull your, from the groin through your bottom ribs, not up, but pull to your chin 
and then stretch your back muscles towards your buttocks. So you feel like your mid thoracic is pulling this way. This allows your head to hang. See how her spine is one contiguous line now. This is great. And then stretch your left leg straight, heel on the floor. Point the foot and drag the foot away from you. This is the neck part. And then the right leg joins it. Nope, same time. Just do it. Be a badass. You, hook, you push through the heels like that so the front body is energized to move this way. The back body goes towards that way. There you go. That was really good. I'd say give her a hand if you weren't all on mute, but you can all congratulate her after class. <laughs> okay, she, she says it's really intense on her wrist, so I'm gonna address this real quick. If you feel a lot of intense on the backside right here where the creases are on the heel, she says it's really intense right here in the forearm side of the wrist. What that tells me is that when she is going up, she is pushing her shoulders forward this way towards the feet. What you have to do is not get like this is a it's a very easy thing to do to when you're up in it to lean towards your feet with your arms. That's going to make your shoulders come in and that might be causing some of your problem, Katie. What you have to think about is that when you go up, yeah. When you're pushing your hands down, Instead of just pulling them wide, you have to push forward almost. You have to try and drag your feet towards your, or your hands towards your feet so that it displaces weight off of that hinge right up into this part more. No, you were fine. That's really hard to teach over Zoom is to like how to move your, drag the yoga mat, but you'll figure it out. All right. Remember, if I'm not using the language that makes sense, whatever language you have to tell yourself to have it make sense, tell yourself that. This is your choice. All right, bend your knees, hips up. Really hook those heels, push those, drag those feet away from you. Stretch from your, really hook those legs. And then stretch from your navel up to your chest bone and your chest bone towards your chin. And then drag your hands wide and forward. There you go. And then stretch both legs straight and try to keep your hips. Point the feet and drag the feet. Hook those heels in it a little bit. Come on, Chaya. Head back straight. Don't look at the camera. Nice, Chuba. Very good. Everybody's doing great. I'm just going to leave you all here. I'm joking, come down. <laughs> Woo! I see lots of people doing this to their wrist. <laughs> it, it, is, it is a challenging pose. One of the reasons that we actually get a lot of pain in, in the forearm and wrist, and I'll give you all a chance to rest while I briefly pontificate upon the human body here. One of the reasons we get a lot of pain in the wrist, carpal tunnel, uh, and wrist pain when we do deep bends one way or the other is the immobility of the forearm muscles and the elbow. And that comes from the shoulder. If we are rounded deeply hard forward like this where the humerus bone, sorry, bone of the arm here, is coming towards the chest, that actually causes a lot of the connective muscles into the elbow to tighten, which allows less mobility of the wrist. We can still put weight on it, but it causes an immense amount of pain and pressure over time. It's how we get carpal tunnel. So by working the upper back from this motion to this motion, it ultimately gives a lot more freedom over time. That's why this is so hard. And this, I think this poses in the series. It's not just a lot of upper back work and leg work, but it's actually working the entire chain of muscle set that goes from your shoulder arm down into your wrist joint. And so this is kind of a good pose. That's why I included today to be a test pose. To, if you practice these things consistently, you can use this to really, one, see some mobility. It's a nice, like, you know, after you practice a lot, it's like, oh, I can do this easier, and to see the pain reduce. It, it's very, very useful for that. Good? Don't lay down for restorative, but lay down. <laughs> use a, grab a yoga strap if your hamstrings are the tight kind. Put your 
Hook the right foot, stretch your right leg straight up into the air. Left leg is straight, thigh laying on the floor, please. Hook your right foot. Good. Pull on the leg a little bit, like you're drawing the leg into a hamstring stretch, and then pause. Once you've got a hold of the leg, and the leg needs to be straight, so you only pull the leg as close to you as you can, you can feel the hamstring stretch. And you can keep the knee straight. You wind it back off your left leg there a little bit and switch legs because I want the right foot hook. Or don't, whatever. All right. Right leg is in the air, left thigh is on the floor. The leg is pulled close and stretched, but the knee must be straight. If your knee is not straight, you're not, you're not going to get the, the action because this is not about pulling the foot to your face. You start to actually train the back muscles to flex a little bit more by lifting them up. So your arms need to be straight, hands up the rope as close as you can to the foot. Good. Push your bottom floating ribs down into the floor very hard. And your bottom floating ribs are on each side of your rib cage on the back, push those down. And then pick your chest up towards your right leg, any degree you can. Your head will come up, but pick your chest up as much as you can towards that right leg. Your, your arms will bend. But notice you will try to pull your leg closer because once you start to round the back, the hamstrings loosen. Keep your leg at roughly that same stretch and think what you can do to not pull your chin to your neck, but to pick your chest bone up towards the leg. So you have to go deep into the core. You have to go deep into that upper back and lift it. <laughs> For most of us, we start in the neck. But as best you can, keep lifting the chest bone and take your elbows wide just to help your shoulder joints. Good. Pick up the body any degree more. Keep your chest lifted to whatever degree it is. Bend the right knee. Take your left hand and grab the right foot and pull the, the shin bone across the chest. You can let go of the strap. You don't need it for a moment. Just pull the shin bone towards the chest, but still pick your chest bone up towards the shin as deep as you can. Right hand can touch the knee, left hand can hold the foot and pull your chest bone up. Don't tuck your chin into your neck but push your left thigh down to help your core flex. <laughs> Woo! We're in the struggle of it now. Go Shuba go. About to curl into a pretzel. Chai is ready for now. <laughs> Come on Chai, pick your chest down. <laughs> All right, relax. <sighs> Hook your left leg, stretch your left leg up. It's fun. We get to do a whole different series of poses. Look at how fun this is. Left leg up in the air. Pull it to the stretch, but the knee still needs to be straight. Once you feel the stretch, take a breath, push your bottom ribs down, pick your chest up towards your leg as high as you can. Bend your elbows, pull on that rope, bend your elbows wide. Get some active lift so you feel the core flex. Notice how your right thigh wants to come up off the floor, push it down. You want a tip? Hook your right buttock into the ground, really root it and stretch it away from your chest bone. This is very challenging. It's not even about just the shoulders coming up. Like they say that the, the range of motion in this pose is good when you can pick your whole mid and upper back up off the floor. Take a breath, keep your chest up now, bend the knee. Right hand grabs your left foot, left hand grabs the knee, 
pull the shin bone across the chest as best you can, and then keep working the game of pick your chest up. These poses are actually quite useful for opening up the back muscles, resetting the QLs, and helping develop the stretch of the wide upper back. Because we are stretching the upper back, we're stretching the wide. Take a breath. All right, down you go. Oh, look, you're already laying down for restorative. How convenient is that? Let your body relax, let your legs stretch out, let your eyes close, my friends. And again, the question I'll propose to you is the same question from the start. If asked about what your yoga practice is, I didn't notice the question isn't who is your yoga teacher? Or what is your tradition? What is your yoga practice? How would you describe it? How would you describe all the things that you've gotten from yoga? And are you describing in a way that is true to what it means to you? And rest, my friends, until I ring the bell and enjoy the fruits of your yoga practice.